there's a direct correlation between plate tectonics and volcanoes and where we see these volcanoes is mainly at conversion boundaries. Um, it can be an oceanic and oceanic conversion boundary or an oceanic and continental conversion boundary, but it needs to be an area where subduction occurs. And what happens is as one plate subducts underneath another, um, the friction becomes so great that it starts heating up that plate, um, starting the melting process, and then as the plate continues down into the upper mantle, the temperatures rise so great that it, the plate itself melts forcing magma up to the surface and then if we're talking an ocean ocean um, convergent boundary it will form volcanic island arcs and an example of this is the Aleutian Islands off the coast of Alaska. Um, if we're talking about an oceanic continental plate um, instead of a volcanic island arc we're going to see continental volcanic arcs and this is going to be um, how we uh, got the formation of the Andes Mountains. The other place that we will see uh, volcanoes if they are not occurring at a convergent boundary is hot spots and what a hot spot is is a um, fixed spot of magma that's rising up through Earth's crust. The Hawaiian Islands are a great example of hot spots. Um, the current island that is over the hot spot is Hawaii or the mainland and um, it is getting larger in size as the magma continues to rise up. It, it's slowly moving itself off of the hot spot, which then will start um, the process of another island forming. Um, you can see in the diagram there that Kauai is the oldest of the um, islands, then Oahu, then Maui, and now we are currently um, we currently have Hawaii sitting over that fixed hot spot. With any volcanic eruption, we experience dissolved gases, and what these dissolved gases are, are what the driving force behind the eruption is. If there's a lot of dissolved gases built up inside the magma chamber, we are going to experience a very violent eruption. If there's low amounts of dissolved gases, we are going to experience a more quiet eruption, or just lava flowing out of the volcano and down the sides of it. Another characteristic of magma is viscosity and viscosity is the resistance to flow so if something has a low viscosity or it is um, doesn't have a high resistance to flow it means it's going to run very quickly and what goes into determining the viscosity of magma is the temperature and composition of it something that um, a volcano that has a very high viscosity and a high gas content is going to experience the most violent eruptions of any volcano the first of the two types of lava is Pahoy Hoy, and Pahoy Hoy is a very fluid, ropey like lava that just flows out over itself, pushing into it um, itself, making that wrinkled look that you see in the pictures there. It's a very slow moving um, lava that just uh, runs. The second type of lava is Ah. And Ah is the complete opposite of Pohoi Hoi. Ah is very rough, jagged, has sharp edges. It's a little faster moving. You can see the wall of it there um, flowing and crushing the car in front of it. Um, it is faster moving than uh, Pohoi Hoi, and for that reason is probably how it got its name of Ah. Besides magma that gets... Um, ejected from a volcano, we also get pyroclastic material. And pyroclastic material is um, the things that are produced by the eruption. Things like um, volcanic ash is probably the most common thing that you've heard of um, being produced out of a volcano. And that is a very fine um, particle that you see in the hands of the person here on the right, or you see the person brushing off of their car here on the left. If it is larger in size, um, more pebble or rock size, we call those um, cinders. And then the largest pyroclastic material that um, we see coming out of um, volcanic eruptions are bombs. And you can see the gentleman there standing next to that bomb. Um, some bombs can get as large as, um, you know, Volkswagen Beetles or small cars. Now the three types of volcanoes that we have here on Earth are shield, cinder cone, and composite. Shield volcanoes are very broad, 
almost dome-shaped volcanoes. They get their name because of their look. They look just like a shield. They experience quiet eruptions, which is what gives them this characteristic. What happens is the magma just slowly um, reaches Earth's surface and then pours down the sides of it, building it up layer by layer and eventually making it into its enormous size that it is. Shield volcanoes are the largest volcanoes that we have, and the Hawaiian Islands are examples of shield volcanoes. Cinder cones are the smallest of our volcanoes, but even though they are the smallest, they are the most violent for their size. Um, they are built primarily of pyroclastic material, ash cinders, um, and oftentimes we get these um, they are built from one single eruption. We see a lot of them in clumps or groups together. Um, Mount Paracutan and Sunset Crater in Arizona is a prime example of a cinder cone. And a composite cone is in between the two of those. A composite cone is slightly larger than a cinder cone, um, not nearly as big as a shield volcano. Um, they do experience violent eruptions, but they, with their violent eruption also comes a combination of flowing lava over the side as well as that pyroclastic material being ejected out of it. Um, and this gives it kind of alternating layers of pyroclastic material and lava to help build it up in size slightly, um, but again not nearly as big as shield volcanoes and um, most of our composite cones we see around the um, ring of fire which is the uh, border around the Pacific Ocean where all of the convergent boundaries are coming um, together. We talked in one of our previous um, notes videos about how um, Earth isn't getting bigger just because we're making new crust but that the Atlantic Ocean is actually getting bigger and the Pacific Ocean is getting smaller due to all of the convergent boundaries um, surrounding the Pacific Ocean and Mount St. Helens is a prime example of this. Here's a picture of uh, Mount St. Helens before um, its eruption back in the 80s and a picture afterwards and with Mount St. Helens what happened is it, the volcanic eruption didn't eject out of the top of the volcano as you know most um, volcanoes that you see in um, movies or shows eject straight out of the top. What happened with Mount St. Helens is it, it, all of the um, explosion occurred on the side of the volcano and actually blew out the entire side of um, the volcano itself. And here's an example of the three types of uh, volcanoes. If we take a profile view of them, just to give you an idea, you can see the scale here um, underneath the shield volcano and then the three examples that I gave you. So the shield volcano is so much more massive than the composite cone or the um, tiny um, cinder cone in relation to the three. Another feature of volcanoes is a caldera, and what happens is after a volcanic eruption, all of the magma in the magma chamber, or the majority of the magma in the magma chamber, has been ejected out of the volcano, whether it flowed out of the sides or um, erupted violently. It then leaves a opening of space, and because of the amount of weight that the volcano and the land is above that open space, the volcano sinks in on itself, leaving this um, open pit or caldera um, depression in the ground. A lot of calderas we'll also experience um, after a long period of time will fill up with water and then eventually possibly give us a lake. And lahars, lahars are mud flows that are created from volcanic ash and water. So it, when a volcanic eruption occurs, um, a lot of times you, we will experience um, rain or if it is a volcano in um, an area that is experiencing winter or there's a lot of snow and ice around, it will melt that snow and ice creating this river looking um, flow which is actually not just water, it's a mixture of volcanic ash and water so it is very heavy and thick um, and very destructive. And again, just a overview of the volcanic lo locations at convergent boundaries, the subducting plates um, melt and magma then rises, examples being Japan, Mount St. Helens. Um, at div divergent boundaries, we experience seafloor spreading, so magma rises up through the rift, giving us 
um, things like the Mid Ocean Ridge, um, Iceland, the East African Rift, and then hot spots are the areas where the mantle plume um, is in a fixed location just with magma rising up towards Earth's surface, making its way out. Um, Hawaii is an, a good example of a hot spot as well as Yellowstone. Yellowstone National Park is actually considered a super volcano and it has a enormous um, magma chamber lying below it and it is currently um, overdue for an eruption in when we look at the history or trends of the eruption and the effects um, arguably would be the most catastrophic that we have ever experienced if it were to ever erupt in um, our lifetimes.